This episode of Critical Strikes is sponsored in part by Wonko's Toys and Games in Austin, Texas. Check them out online at wonkos.com for all your collectible toy and tabletop gaming needs. Hey everyone, it's Tox from CritsHappen.com. Thanks for watching and welcome back. We've got another Critical Strike, three games, micro-reviewed in 15 to 20 minutes total. We're going to look at two games from Alderac Entertainment Group and one game from Steve Jackson Games. First up is going to be Thunderstone the Starter Set. This is deck building from Alderac Entertainment Group and it puts you in a fantasy setting where you're going to be acquiring cards in a village and hunting down monsters in a dungeon. But you better have your torches and you better have your light. Next up we're going to look at Guildhall Job Fair. This is kind of an expansion. It is um, a second in a series I guess is the easiest way to say it. It is a card game where you're going to be building up guilds of different types of workers. The more you have, the more effective your guild is going to be, and the more points you're going to be able to rake in and score to win the game. That's also from Alderac. And then our sponsored game from Wonkos at wonkos.com here in Austin, Texas, is Steve Jackson's Castellan. Castellan is an area control game that is three-dimensional. It's going to have pieces that you're going to be interlocking and piecing together and is very unique and very interesting. We're definitely looking forward to talking about this one. So, before I talk any further, let's get to our castle tower, let's make sure we have our entire guild members, and let's go slay some dragons in this episode of Critical Strikes. So first up is Thunderstone the Starter Set. This had me a little worried. When I first saw it, I was like, hmm, what is this really going to provide me? I'm an experienced Thunderstone player. I love it. I think it is a great game. It is very fun from a deck building perspective, and it offers you multiple choices. However, when I saw a starter set, it wasn't too keen. I was thinking it was either going to be a bunch of really basic cards, or it was going to be some cards that might provide value, um, and was really more geared towards a uh, group of people who hadn't played it. Well, I'm happy to say there's quite a bit in this box for both types of people. Whether you're brand new to Thunderstone or brand new to deck building, this is a great set to pick up. There's some new cards in there that experienced players are going to really enjoy. There's also some really easy rules to pick up on. Now, there was one thing that I was disappointed at that if I have played deck building games but haven't played Thunderstone yet, I would be more inclined to buy the advanced set just for the board. This starter set is only cards, which is great because you can set up very quickly and very easily. Um, and there are enough cards to give you a little bit of variation, but it is also going to whet your appetite and want you to you know, be buying more and seeing more of the sets. However, the advanced set offers a board that I think is really nice in terms of keeping track of the dungeon and keeping track of the village. So in this game, you're going to have a set of cards that you can acquire in a village, and then a deck of cards that's going to be monsters that are going to come out randomly in a dungeon. And there's going to be different levels of the dungeon. And you're going to use the cards that you buy in the village to go defeat the monsters in the dungeon. The whole goal, of course, to amass the most victory points from defeating monsters in the dungeon. The game will end when you find the Thunderstone Bearer, who is someone in the dungeon who is usually a pretty big, bad, nasty boss, and someone defeats him. And the challenge inside of Thunderstone is, do I go to the village and buy, or do I go to the dungeon and go plunder and go attack? And it is very challenging, because there's going to be different things that will happen based on the cards that are in the dungeon that are going to interact with your heroes that you send to go and attack different monsters. Overall, I would give this Thunderstone set a hit. It is good enough, great enough for a new player, whether they are uh, new to deck building or new to Thunderstone as a genre. In my opinion, I still think that if you are an experienced deck builder that you would probably be better suited buying the advanced set and looking at some of the options that gives you, uh, having the board and having more cards as well. But even if you are an advanced player, there is a good number of cards in here that if you can get it or possibly get it at a discount could offer you some additional cards to add into your set of Thunderstone cards and make your experiences even more fun. So. Great quality, fun game, good experience. Thunderstone the starter set gets a hit. Next up is our sponsored game. This is from Steve Jackson Games. It's called Castellan. This was provided to us by Wonkos here in Austin, Texas. You can find them online at wonkos.com. Now, Steve Jackson Games 
made one of my favorite games of all times, and there's a lot of rumors about them potentially remaking it soon. It's called Car Wars. I love Car Wars. Absolutely love that game. I miss that game greatly. But this game is completely different from that or any other game that you may have seen that Steve Jackson has brought out before. This is a three-dimensional area control game. And what I mean by three-dimensional is you have these little towers and you have wall pieces that are long and short. And what's happening is each turn you have two decks of cards. You have a tower deck and you have a wall deck. The only difference between them is tower decks will at least provide you one tower. Wall decks will at least provide you one wall. You're going to use those cards and play them and then collect the number of pieces on the card. So for example, if I were to take one of these out of here and dig in through a bunch of pieces, if I were to take and play this card right here, I would get two short walls and one long wall. If I were to play this card, I would get two towers plus the ability to draw an extra card this turn. Now, you can play multiple different cards. You're going to start the game with four cards in your hand. You can play all four if you want, but at the end of your turn, you're only drawing one card back. So while you could make one big giant build wave, you're also going to be limited from that point of the game on. So you have to strategically decide when you're going to expand and how fast you're going to expand. But what happens is you use these pieces to build up different areas, and once an area is enclosed, you take your towers and you put them in there. At one point in the game, you can choose to do a double tower. Now, each area at the end of the game that you have control of is going to provide you points based on the number of towers surrounding it. So yes, as you can imagine, you could build an enclosed area and then based on the available slots on these towers that would allow you to build off of them, you could build into that enclosed area if it was big enough to add more towers. So there's some really key strategic points around when you're going to enclose something in, when you're going to build something that may not be enclosed in and hope that your opponents don't do it yet, and when you're going to choose to get the double points for something. We've had many games where we've played and later on in the game someone has already placed their double tower and they have an absolutely amazing opportunity to enclose a large area and they're kicking themselves because they placed their double tower earlier on in the game. We've had a lot of fun with Castellan. When I first saw it, it was actually being played by Steve Jackson at Wonko's. And I looked at it, I said, wow, that looks interesting, but eh, it looks kind of basic. And then I started to watch the intricacies of the game, and I started to see the strategic moments in the game, and it looked amazing. We've had a chance to play it multiple times with two players, and it is an absolute blast. And one of the cooler things that I'm looking forward to is there is another set that has yellow and green towers providing you more walls and more cards to play with four players. Now, I have not played it with four players because we only have the two-player set, but we did get to watch it that day at Wonko's with Steve Jackson himself playing in a four-player setup, and it is amazing fun. There are a lot of strategic moments, a lot of deceptively tight spots where you think everything is going your way, and then all of a sudden an opponent comes in and captures an area and takes control of all these points. We've had a lot of fun with it. It's part abstract, it's part area control, but it's a whole lot of fun. So at the end of the day, Castellan is going to get a crit from Crits Happen. Finally on our list is Guildhall Job Fair. Now, Guildhall, the original game, which I believe is now being called Old World Market, uh, came out, I think, at the end of last year, and it was a different style card game. It was one where you had cards in your hand, and you were using the abilities based all around symbols on them to gain more actions and do more things to build up your guild hall to ultimately gain a chapter of characters and then use that chapter to buy victory points. The whole point was to maximize the roles that you chose in your guild. Uh, it sounds confusing if you've never played it before, but essentially what happens is every turn you're going to have a set of, um, number of cards in your hand. You're going to choose one and play it, and then that card based on the number of other similar types in your guild are going to allow you to do actions. There's basically thresholds on each card and they're based off of how many of the same type of that role you already have in your guild. 
You're going to start the game with three of any type of card that you want to choose from random ones that are handed out to you to put in your guild. So at the beginning of the game, you're not just empty. You will have some. But over the course of time, you could get three or four multiple different types of cards of that one roll in your guild. And they're all going to be different colors, so it's part trick-taking and part set matching. Um, but there's a lot, just a lot of interaction. I didn't actually like Guildhall when it first came out. When it first came out, I felt that it was overly interactive because a major part of the game in the original roles that were involved with Guildhall was really being a jerk and, and screwing with your neighbor and really messing them up more so than, than helping yourself. But I'm really happy to say that I think Job Fair has done a really good job of balancing that. Now the cool thing about this system or this type of game is you can use any six roles. So you can take the roles from the original set and some of the roles from this new set and mix them together. If you don't have the original set though, you can go buy Job Fair and use that just as a base set on its own. So while it's kind of an expansion, it's kind of not an expansion as well. So there's a lot of different options available to you which I thought was really cool. But more so, the roles of this set are much more positive, in my opinion, of an interaction than the roles from the original set. We don't have an original set copy, so we weren't able to interact these together. We've played it multiple times with friends, but playing this one on its own, I can tell you just by itself, is quite a good amount of fun. It is a very quick game. You can be over with as quickly as 20 to 25 minutes. Um, in some cases, we had one game that ended in 15 minutes because the person just drew tremendously well. But it is very light. It's very easy to port you know, portably take around. Because you only need six rolls, uh, it is very tight to be able to come around. The, the thing about this box being this big is this box actually offers you um, expansion slots in here. So you're going to be able to have many, many more. In fact, from, from rumor that I've heard, there are a ton more uh, of roles available for Guild Hall. So I would expect to see more fun coming from AEG when it comes from this one. At the end of the day, we're going to give Guild Hall Job Fair a hit. It is a fun game on its own. It looks to interact very well with some of the original set cards from the original Guild Hall. Um, and while it is not the most amazing card game you may ever play, it is definitely off the beaten path and something that involves trick taking and set matching in a whole new way to provide you a good amount of fun. So we'll give Guildhall Job Fair a hit from Crits Happen. So that's an awful lot to pack into a short amount of time. But at the end of the day, Thunderstone and Guildhall both get hits and Castellan gets a crit. We'd like to once again thank Wonko's Toys and Games here in Austin, Texas for providing us a copy of Castellan and sponsoring this episode. We hope that you've enjoyed it. You can check out more from them at wonkos.com. But of course, we'd love to hear from you wherever you are in the world. Feel free to leave your comments below on the YouTube channel. You can of course join in the discussion on Facebook, on Twitter, and on Google Plus by searching Crits Happen or at our homepage at critshappen.com. But until we see you at Gen Con coming up soon, or anywhere else online. Keep rolling those dice, and we hope they're all crits. The idea is when you connect an area that is boxed in completely, you're gonna get points based on the number of towers, falls apart, 